Professional dressing often refers to a type of dress code that is more formal than a mere casual attire. You can be totally creative with your looks, but remember that more important than the clothes you put on is the personality behind the clothes. Hello and welcome to Miners on the Go. I want to believe it's been a wonderful week so far and I hope you're minding your manners as well. I appreciate you for always cheering me on and if you've been following for some time, you're welcome again. If it's your first time today, you're in the right place. You're most welcome. Standard is a repeatable, harmonized, agreed and documented way of doing something. Standards are established requirements, measures, norm or model in comparative evaluations to drive innovation and increase productivity. You may be wondering, why this definition? But it is to emphasize on the word standards and its importance to your professional life. Let's zero down to dressing standards today. Having discussed at length about dressing for success and some dressing gaps to avoid, it is only ideal to stress on the professional dressing standards for both men and women using a few basic pointers. Professional dressing often refers to a type of dress code that is more formal than a mere casual attire. This type of dress code is most often seen in traditional office settings like those in consulting, finance, accounting and government organizations, and so on. This type of clothing is also often expected at formal networking events, job fairs and job interviews, unless otherwise stated by the company. On the subject of dressing professionally, it is always a good idea to consult your company's written code of conduct as we most likely find some guidance there. If your company has given you the free will, then it's a chance to be creative. Now, let's dive into the professional dressing standards first for women. It's a new generation and today's working women we find more competition than ever in the workplace. And a professional appearance is a critical factor when moving through the corporate ranks. You can be totally creative with your looks, but remember, that more important than the clothes you put on is the personality behind the clothes. So, let's see a few dressing standards for the professional women. Number one, conservative colors are more powerful and they give a feel of confidence. Some of these colors include navy, navy blue, black, charcoal gray, and dark brown. Ensure that you have these colors in your wardrobe. Another beautiful thing about these colors is that they give the illusion of a slimmer body. Number two, there are other season colors for dresses and suit sets that you can have in your wardrobe. For example, red, orange, light blue, pink, and so on. These colors are acceptable, but for a more professional look, please do dark block colors. Number three, wear a matching suit and knee length or longer skirt or pants. Avoid mini skirts for a formal look. You don't want to keep adjusting your skirt when you're sitting. Also, know that a jacket will always add instant power and authority. Let's do a crash course on best jackets for your body type in another episode, shall we? Number four, for your clothes. Know that the longer the sleeve, the more formal you tend to look. Number five, the native prints are becoming quite acceptable for a formal business look in a few establishments. That's great, but choose tailored styles that fit the workplace indeed. Our Amazon, Dr. Okonjo Iwela, is a classic example of someone who rocks African prints in a professional setting. Notice that the styles are customized to fit the work environment. So before you go bold with your Ankara print, be sure about the setting you're wearing it to. Like I usually say to my friends, until you become a brand, err on the side of caution with your professional look. Number six, use fragrances sparingly. Don't douse yourself in perfume. If you can smell yourself, then it's probably too much. So, smell graciously feminine. It announces your presence in a unique way and could be a signature or identity. Number seven, wear business knee-length dresses with suit jackets. Remember, the length of your dress also determines the length of the jacket that you wear. For example, don't wear a hip-long jacket with a long dress. It makes you look bulkier than should be. Number eight, 
don't forget to wear a nicely styled hair. Not all hairstyles give a professional look. Be mindful of this. Avoid the zany hairstyles including different colors that neither suit your skin tone or your job. Here are a few accessories to go with. Number one, dress shoes go with suits. Don't do a pair of sandals with your pants or skirt suits. It detracts from the power look. The height of your heel ideally should be medium or low, three inches at the most. But block heels and kitten heels are a great choice. Do solid colors to start with. In summary, please don't wear your stilettos with a business formal look. Number two, do well to avoid unpolished or rundown shoes. Check the soles and be sure they won't give way while you're in the line of duty. I have learned to inspect my shoes before I step out of the house as I have been embarrassed many times. Number three, avoid slip, bra and panty lines that show. What you wear should be comfortable and appropriate. If you dislike thongs like I do, then boy shorts or hip stars are a great option. But by all means, do not let your panty lines show under your clothes. Number four, cosmetics should have equal intensity on your eyes and your cheeks and your lips. Avoid shiny eyeshadows, shiny lips and nails in the daytime. Shimmers are not for a daytime professional look. Number five, avoid gargantuan or oversized bags. I often say to people that if two one liter juice boxes fit conveniently into your handbag, then it's too big. Also for bags, try to buy the structured ones, bags that can stand neatly on their own when you place them down. However, if you have one that isn't structured, ensure to pad them up with your tabs and your books. It's just a smarter option for a professional look. Number six, invest in corsages and scarves, good but simple jewelry pieces. When it comes to jewelry, stick to the bare essentials. Go for smart slick designs for a sophisticated and professional look. Pearls are a good to have too. It gives a grand look. Don't forget to chip in one once in a while. If in doubt, don't wear it. People tend to notice that one thing that you didn't do as well as you should have or could have. Now, let's talk to the men. There's this belief that men don't have enough to go along when it comes to dressing and accessories. So a word of advice for the men, invest in your suits, spend some money. The truth is quality is cheap in the long run. So make sure it fits and don't wear dramatic colors. If you're just starting up a professional wardrobe, you basically need the following items in your wardrobe. Two suits in colors, navy blue and gray. Two to three slacks or trousers that you can wear when you don't need to wear a suit set. Five shirts, majorly white and light blue colors. And you may throw one light pink color in the mix. Five simple, solid striped, or pattern ties. Have at least one gingham print for a classy look. Also, have one red tie for a power look. Then, two pairs of shoes, a black one and a brown one for starters. Add a pair of smart sneakers or loafers for the dress down days. Also, have at least one blazer for a business casual look. Now let's talk about the professional dressing standards for men. For a professional look, opt for shades of blue, black and gray suits. However, brown, red, purple and green colors are gradually creeping in. But I must warn you that these colors are not for everyone. Neither are they suited for every workplace. So again, consult your dress codes. Number two, button up your suits when you're standing or about to rise to your feet after sitting. When your suit is buttoned, leave the last button undone. Meaning, if it's a two button suit, do the first and leave the last. There is an exception if it's a double-breasted suit. Please ensure that all your buttons are done whether you're sitting or standing. And as you're about to take a seat, stylishly undo all your buttons except you're wearing a double-breasted suit. Number three, your shirts look more powerful in plain white, light blue, light pink or any other light color. Plain white shirts is always a great option, but you can spice it up with textured shirts or inconspicuous designs. Number four, your shirt must always be starched and ironed properly. Number five, please obey the rules of plain and patterned. When you're wearing a plain shirt, you can opt for a patterned tie. 
and the other way around too. However, a plain shirt with a plain tie works just perfectly. There are also a few accessory etiquettes to consider. Number one, the color of your belt and shoes must match in corporate dressing. Number two, shoes can make or break your suit. So please buy some high quality shoes and please stay away from, you know, the square toed shoes. The Oxford and Derby shoes are the best for your suits. However, a pair of brogues or monk straps are also acceptable. Loafers and smart sneakers are gradually sneaking in as the line between business formal wears and business casual wears are getting blurry by the day. Number four, your socks need to be long enough to cover your legs when your legs are crossed. This is very important. Your socks ideally should match either your pants or shoes but hey i see some zany colors these days but i warn you err on the side of caution i trust there are certain work environments that you shouldn't wear a pair of socks of your favorite cartoon character to you may be unknowingly communicating a wrong message number five your belts can be of medium quality as long as they look good as soon as your belt starts showing a sign of distress please change it number six a cheap looking tie can ruin a suit. So make sure your tie is conservative, no crazy designs or logos. And your tie should always reach your belt buckle, not shorter, not longer. Number seven, use cufflinks if your shirt requires it. A good wristwatch also speaks to. Number eight, please wear your wedding ring by all means if you own one. Why do you think I'm advising you to do that? I'd like you to tell me in the comment section. Number nine, finally, include a thin wallet and briefcase to top it all up. Don't wear your wallet in your trouser pockets. Not only do they disfigure your look, this is also bad for your health. Ideally, you should wear it in your suit inner pocket. That's why you should keep it thin. Truth be told, these days business casual can and may be the norm. But one should always do their homework on what is expected of you in your workplace. Casting an appropriate impression at work is by no means tough if you don't forget three fundamental points for dressing while purchasing your office clothes. The first one is that presentation is really important. Second point, casual doesn't mean untidy. Third point, dress according to your desire, sober, upward bound, professional and prepared to meet your clients always funny as it may dress like your customers only a little better and more professional if you don't look the part it is hard to do the job to your best ability according to mark twine clothes make the man do remember to keep the conversation going in the comment section like this video subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends too thank you and goodbye